The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you for all of you joining me. We will get started in a moment. Thank you for all of you guys who are joining me here today. My name, is, my name is Lee Swan Bolden, and I am a BIM consultant with Graphisoft, providing training and implementation services. Um, before we get started, if you're having any trouble hearing me or seeing my screen, there is a question bar in your GoToMeeting panel. You can also use this to ask questions that will be answered uh, after the webinar. So please let us know. I'll give anyone a moment just to check that everyone can hear me and or see my screen, and then we will go ahead and get started. All right. So uh, for those of you who joined early, the video that you saw is a part of our series by design where we are um, following some of our um, architects and designers, so learning more about their workflow. And we will give you more information about that. But if you want to know what it looks like for many different design practices to use Archicad, uh, take a look at that series. So today you are here as a part of a webinar intro to the ALA BIM bundle with Archicad. Uh, so what we are doing, we're partnering with uh, ALA to provide a benefit of 25% on new licenses of ARCHICAD and SOLO. And today we're going to give you a demo of ARCHICAD, talk about, about the differences a little. And also, if you are a current ARCHICAD user, uh, you can save $300 on upgrades uh, with Archi Plus. So that's what we're offering here today. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, ARCHICAD and what it entails. But one thing about this bundle uh, that we're partnering with ALA, uh, we will be providing training. So there will be uh, hours of training that are included free. And if you have more questions, there is a handout in your GoToMeeting webinar panel. Uh, feel free to contact us. Eric Coughlin, my partner's information will be on the last slide as we get through here today. So once again, just if you're having any trouble, please adjust your audio. You may want to use your computer audio or your phone audio. If you cannot hear me, hang up and call again. Those of you who don't know us, who is Graphisoft? So uh, we are a BIM software. This is now about 34 years of doing BIM. Our first application actually had windows and doors and walls. And so it's been a long time. It's a software that's been developed by architects. Uh, for architects and designers throughout the AEC industry. And uh, part of our promise is Open BIM, that we can work with many other different softwares. If you have any questions, you can ask later. But some of them include uh, export, importing and exporting DWG, importing and exporting SketchUp, RVT files, Excel files. Uh, there are actually 52 different file types that we import and export. And we also work on both platforms. So if you're looking at this as a solution for your office with multiple users, one can be on a Mac, one can be on a PC, and you guys can work together. So why are we here today? Why would you use Archicad? Why use BIM? So um, if your firm is like others um, who in the industry today are using multiple softwares in order to uh, accomplish their design and maybe using AutoCAD and SketchUp workflows, maybe 
using several other softwares in uh, in the interim. Um, you know, often they're experiencing these inefficiencies when it's time to make changes from the design to the design development to the construction document stage. So with your experience in design, you know, clients will always be requesting a number of changes and they will always be increasing, especially now with the expectation of people, um, uh, shows like HGTV, uh, and also just the commonality of the 3D environment. Um, so what we want to offer you is a, a tool that you can use to think in, think in 3D, uh, benefit from seeing your idea, idea and figuring out complex systems. So we're going to use this model in order to generate all of the, the, the drawings that we need, such as sections, elevations, and details, you're going to be able to annotate and customize your designs as you would in any construction document set, but you're going to be able to benefit specifically from automatic numbering, uh, updated markers within your document, and schedules, and all of the good stuff that comes from the building information modeling uh, model. Excuse me. Uh, so. In addition to what we need for our deliverable, you know, this is also an all-in-one tool where you can communicate and present your design using such features as 3D documents, uh, renderings, and the BIMX hypermodel, which I'm going to show you last. You can explore your project or have your client exploring your 2D or 3D format. And if you are working with other consultants or you have uh, any deliverable requirements, this is just an abbreviated list of some of the formats that we exchange to. So ARCHICAD is this all-in-one solution integrated, so you don't have to worry about coordinating changes. Every change is going to be updated in plan, elevation, section, and 3D. And using this virtual model, you'll be able to catch errors early by building the model as you would in the actual real world. And if you are really building on full 3D and you're collaborating with other consultants using 3D, you'll be able to benefit from class detections, which can help you uh, not uh, run into those costly change orders later on in, in, in your process. Uh, so going to get started in ARCHICAD. If you have any questions, there is a uh, question bar in your GoToMeeting webinar panel. So I want to start off with a couple different project types because one of the myths I want to dispel is that BIM is for uh, is uh, only for projects of a certain size, and it can be used on projects of any size. So I'll start from large to small. Um, some people use our software in order to understand and explore larger environments. Uh, so you'll see one of the things we'll talk about kind of in the interim is the performance. I have five ARCHICADs open. This model has several structures, and you can use this to explore perhaps a transect, or, you know, if you want to get a little bit more detailed, go in and create these individual spaces. So these can be utilized for you. Uh, if you're working on a you know, maybe a large mixed-use project or an office project, uh, you will be able to benefit from, if you'd like, to integrate your entire design. And right now what you're seeing, uh, this is in a large office project. It's in white model mode. Uh, one of the ways that we can work, and as we are working through this, maybe you just want to explore the space, you can do that. But what we're offering, this is not a rendering. While you're working in ARCHICAD, feel free to go in and select elements in your design. Um, make some decisions, make some some changes uh, as you move along. So fully immersive 3D environment. And if you're looking at mixed use, office buildings, restaurants, um, just a little bit of anything can be designed here uh, within ARCHICAD for multiple purposes. Uh, one moment, I see I have uh, a hand raised. If you'd be so kind to type in the chat box. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, so, uh, you know, you're going to use this model for multiple purposes, and that's what we're here to discuss. Some people want it for basic CDs. Some want a fully detailed model. But what's going to happen is you're going to be able to utilize this entire model for multiple reasons. So perhaps you're showing a uh, marketing plan, or perhaps you're showing something for construction documents or presentation. All of that is available here. And as you create your model uh, in detail, you will be able to include that. And as for those who are working with 
um, other consultants. You know, you can model everything here or and or import any of their structural uh, or MEP needs. And I'm going to start closing some of these as we go along. Uh, so if we're talking about it at a different scale, maybe you're talking about a commercial strip mall example or just one shop. And so, you know, utilize some of the things in ARCHICAD. Maybe you want to understand surfaces a little bit better or try to get try some different surfaces. Uh, we have a number of different surfaces, over a thousand that are included in the pack. And what can happen is if I want to make some changes in the model, I can select elements and maybe make a blanket change or I could paint them one at a time. So this is a benefit of our uh, surface painter. Uh, if you'd like to use that, but once again, no matter what kind of project you're dealing with, whether it's using your 3D documents, black and white or color, all of this information will become available as you are uh, using this to accomplish your designs. So another different project, and then we're going to jump into a blank project as well. Um, we also have designers that want to model absolutely everything, common myth of them, oh gosh, I have to come in here, I have to model everything. And we have some that do a, my, a hybrid process. We have some people that model everything. Uh, this particular client, if we take a look at this, and I'm going to uh, activate what are called our cut planes, you know, the, he's designing with everything in mind. So this model was built as a model that could be cut, that you can cut a section anywhere and get details. And so uh, the 3D details have been utilized here uh, and part of the, what we're going to talk about here, different wall types, where uh, he's really developed what are called complex profiles. And through these complex profiles, I'm able to draw a, a detail in 2D and extrude that in 3D. And listen, you could build a bunch of these. These can become a part of your template. But this is the purpose of his model. Is so when he cuts a, a section, it's automatically being detailed with everything that he needs. So you can also level, uh, 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 develop your model to that level as well. Now, um, last one, and then we're going to move into a blank project. You might be having a hybrid process, right? Where your consultants are working in 2D and you will be working in 3D. So here we have a residential model. And just once again, how we can use this for different purposes. Maybe you want to set up and show uh, different views and the backside isn't so nice, but maybe you want to see different parts of the project or you want to detail a portion to explain parts of what you're doing. And so within this one platform, uh, we can also show different phases of design in order to um, accomplish our plans, but also once again, just to clearly cl communicate with our clients exactly what we're needing. So this is just a little bit of a sample of where we're headed here today. Uh, we are going to start a quick model, um, just a, a typical residential model, and talk about certain workflows and what that might look like to you. But in this environment, you know, we have some 2D um, uh, electrical and mechanical information, uh, but we have schedules that are being generated. So how you use ARCHICAD is ultimately going to be up to you. That's what we're here for, to try and assist you and understand what your workflow is. But today, let's just go ahead and jump into a blank file. Now, how do you start your design? Um, there are a number of different designers. We, we all probably start a little bit differently. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is start a worksheet. They're good for st sh storing lots of information. You see the presentation information I have there. So if you're building a presentation with diagrams, you might have this here. Uh, but you might want to bring in sketches, surveys, things about the project. Um, use, utilize this one file platform in order to accomplish your needs. So what we can do if we have a hand sketch, uh, you know, scan it in, have a JPEG, a PDF, and go ahead and drag and drop it in. And so what you do need to do, just to take one additional step, is take advantage of the scale, right? So we can use our resize command, which shortcut is command K or control K. I don't have any dimensions, so I'm going to define it graphically by drawing a line to represent what in my drawing says, in this case, 15 feet. But then really just, I'm drawing a line segment, but then I type 15 feet to scale it into correct ARCHICAD size. So where I might go with this is that this 
might in fact be used as what is called a trace reference uh, so that you can begin you know, drafting right over the top of your sketches. Now, the deal is with your sketches, uh, what you, you will want to um, actually enter um, uh, inter dimensions because you don't have actual things to lock onto, right? It's just a roster image. So there will be some back and forth. And I see this one was nine feet here, and then we can continue and sketch around this in this manner. So that's one way you might start. You might also start your design with DWGs. So maybe you have some as-built drawings and or uh, maybe you're starting an, an old project that is getting a renovation. Um, you can bring that in via worksheet as well by drag and drop. So we can very quickly bring in any of our drawings except DWGs do have scale associated with it. And when we bring this element in, it can remain as a block. Like we might want to leave our consultant's drawings, but still benefit from the hotspots that we're able to access. If it's mine, if it's a detail library, because you can also start to bring in your details. Maybe I want to right click and explode this. Maybe I want to bring in my layers, maybe not. But there's a lot of control over what you can do. And then this too can be used uh, as a trace reference. So just think about our handy yellow roll of trace that we're used to, and we could move this into the view here. But what can begin to happen as a result of this, and I'm just gonna draw a couple of walls here, you know, as we're developing our model, we are also, of course, developing all of the other views that are necessary to us. So I'm gonna cut this off. I don't wanna build this entire structure, but you might go in here and trace the whole thing. And as a workflow point, maybe you wanna get your windows. So we have this trace and reference palette you can turn down the opacity of the active layer so that you can go in and pop in some of your windows, right? And it depends on what you know. Maybe you know a lot more information. Maybe you want to stretch them to fit and you can change the tolerances and start to use this as a process that is going to be developing your 3D model at the same time. So depending on your workflow, we have something for you. But let's also talk about what it looks like to just start from scratch. What does it look like to come in here and design? Because we're going to be using this one platform to start our model in schematic design and transition that model into you know, construction documents and, and, and forward. So what I'm gonna do here, basically I start with a tool. Let me just educate you about what's where. So we have our 3D tools here. We have our 2D tools here. Anytime I select a tool, it's gonna populate this top bar so you're going to see me clicking up here during today's presentation. And don't worry, the training goes over all of this. We actually start in 2D so that you understand those tools because they, they definitely transition to what we do for the other tools. Now over here, we have our navigator, uh, starting with our project map, the source views of everything that we create, the view map where we can take particular views and then take and then filter it to show certain things. So we do have layers here, but then we have layer combinations, which you can show and hide different things according to your particular needs, can be customized. I can work at any scale. I could, I could start to introduce things that deal with um, the scale that which we're working with or the, the, the level of detail or overrides to, to show or call out information or perhaps the renovation filter. So what happens is that we take these views and then we place them with their expectations and all of their needs uh, onto these sheets so that as we draw, it begins to populate here. And these sheets, let me just start you off, are built off of masters. ArcD is our master. Uh, what you're going to do, this is just lines and text. Maybe you come in here and you just draw it. Or perhaps you drag and drop in your DWG title block but it's utilizing auto text to automatically number our uh, elements as well as provide uh, information uh, within our model that can be uh, transferred for use in multiple places, right? So for instance, uh, we're gonna have our ALA project going here today and that's gonna update here. We'll come back to talk about the sheet numbering. Now, lastly, you might want to export this so you can batch publish this using our our publisher to PDFs, uh, BIMX, which we'll talk about, our mobile platform, IFC, if we are working 
on uh, any other uh, BIM software. If we're using, if anyone's using Revit MEP or Revit Structure, we also have RVT exports, uh, and then of course DWGs. And this stuff is already set up for you. And we're going to talk about how the template itself can help you begin your workflow and 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 help you develop your plans. So let's get started. We're going to draw a wall. Now, when we select the wall, it does go to a layer that I can change at any time. It starts with the geometry method. I can draw different shapes. Um, I might have different information. I might have the outside or the inside of the structure, uh, dimensions. Um, I might have basic walls, you know, just one wall if I want to draw it, or composite walls with multiple materials or complex profiles with detail. So this is where we start. Now, I'm going to start drawing here, and basically, I enter a dimension, I move it in the general direction, and then I type and enter a dimension. So you're going to move around your project as such, and this little pet palette, maybe you switch into different geometries, I don't know, we don't have to do that here, but you can also press backspace and go back to the last place in that line as well. So as we draw this, You'll see me F3 or click up here. This is immediately available in 3D. So when we're developing our project, maybe we are developing a little bit more. We can, um, there's a lot of flexibility in what we can do. There are various toolbars that can help us control, perhaps if I see this wall at a half point or whether I see it as a, as a matter of a division of three. And sometimes when we're drawing, we might, draft and redraft and so maybe you know the solution is using one wall in order to accomplish other walls all the while entering dimensions as they become available and for those of you who are already comfortable with a 3d workflow you know feel free to go into 3d and do ex exactly the same thing remember i said in that training that we'll be talking about that's bundled into the promotion you'll be able to start your training in 2d uh, because the same way we work in 2D is equivalent to what we do in 3D. So maybe this is the start of our plan. Now, if we want to uh, add a floor slab, and I'll come back to walls in a moment, but I'll select my slab. Maybe I have a single material. Maybe I know the composite. And these are some of the composites we start you off with, uh, where you can start to build your library of this element. But if I use concrete and gravel here, uh, I could trace this. I could go around the edges, build a square, use that same methodology I did to build the walls. Uh, but then there's also this thing called magic wand, where if I hold this, if I click the slab uh, uh, tool and then hold my space bar, I can automatically create my slab element and then, of course, show it in 3D. So developing this further, Let's say we want to introduce some surfaces at the exterior, and I know everyone works differently. You might start with the slab or 2D, but let's just talk about workflows and how you can accomplish your, your model and, and eventually your construction documents. So right now we're in a white model mode. It's really good for you as a designer and for your client. Uh, you talk more about spaces. But at any time, all of uh, the surfaces can be available, right? So we might bring up our surface painter, which, like I said, it comes with over a thousand surfaces. You also can create any of your own custom surfaces. But you might come in and decide just at a schematic level, yeah, okay, I think I want this wall to be brick. And I'm going to use just a couple different bricks here to demonstrate a point where you know early in your process you're experimenting but maybe you haven't made a decision about the, the 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 type of brick wall and the thickness of the studs and all of that so we can use a schematic wall paint it and if i want to explore materials select materials in this list to hover and perhaps preview what that'll look like or click into replace that and all the while while we're experimenting in this schematic form of course, we are uh, simultaneously building our elevations, which we're gonna, I've set up some to be colored just to show that the surface all, is always available, but then there's also uh, black and white available. So even as you're exploring your schematic design, you are getting information that you can use uh, and translate into your client. And this can be used for things other than walls. So surface painters are great. Uh, let's just remove those for a second. Maybe you know exactly what you want from the onset. 
So you might choose from one of our composites or build your own where instantaneously we can place the wall brick two by six and 11 and a quarter perhaps, which includes airspace, sheathing, insulation. I mean, that's all a part of this and it's being transferred into our 2D model as well. Now what's handy about this, and we'll go into this just for a moment here, but there are a lot of intelligent things that are happening with our building materials and our surfaces. So if this material were to change um, composition, maybe it's a siding wall and not brick, you know, it's gonna start to make some decisions about what it does, uh, when it stops, when it continues. Uh, so that's a part of how the intelligence in the model uh, can be used to perhaps build along what you already have, or as more information becomes available, uh, you know, access other elements in the project. And composites, they're really just building materials. I'll just right click to show you, but they're building materials and you can define what'll be a core and the finish. And you didn't have to go in here first to create it, but you know, if you have favorite wall types, this is where you're gonna spend some time developing it as a part of your template. Uh, and it's not just for walls, it's for slabs and roofs and our shell tool. And what happens is if you update this, and I'm just going to update this with just a generic material, but if I update this, every composite is now updated with that information. So just think about changes in projects, maybe value engineering, maybe new materials become available, or you make different decisions. Make that decision once, have it flow throughout our model. So let's get a little bit into our interior walls. Uh, one thing I want to do, and let's let's just close our uh, surface painter. I'm not going to experiment with that, but uh, let's bring up our guidelines. L is the shortcut, and basically I can bring these in to help me start to get project set up, uh, get started setting up my project. So perhaps if I wanted to provide guidelines to uh, meet certain standards of, of the drawing, or maybe I want to build a guideline that is, you know, five feet from the edge of this and build a wall based upon that, I can do that. And you'll notice I haven't even went into the tool yet. And just dispelling another myth, I don't have to set this up so much before I get there. So one thing that you can do with, the, with these composites, how you show it in 2, 3, uh, 2 and 3D, is set up your favorites. And we have some favorites, but you'll set up some of your own. And you can utilize these to go ahead and build this. Or if you're working in an office of uh, a few, build some office standards, right? We know how hard those can be to maintain and making sure that everybody's on the same page. And so they are making correct intersections based on our materials. Or if we want to use this guideline, we can once again type information as it becomes available and complete uh, any of our wall chains. And let's go see it in 3D. Of course, this is all of, always available and you can draw in 3D too for those who enjoy that. Now, developing this a little bit more, uh, let's place some windows and doors, and I'll just start with just the door. Um, these little tick marks I was talking about, they help you, right? Um, why draw extra lines to find the center point or a third or any of these things? So I can use this to place a door. Basically, it wants the outside face, reveal side of the door, and then I choose a swing very simply, very quickly. And if we're placing any of our interior doors, maybe you benefit from the favorites. And I'm going to go into the library in a moment here uh, because I want you to see what all is available. That list is only just a, a small example of, of what's actually available within ARCHICAD. Uh, but as you're placing these elements, maybe, maybe you want to be more specific. You can use anchor points and, and say, oh, I want this door to be, you know, three feet from the corner of the, the edge of this wall and placing like that. So even as we're developing our model, and I'll go into our windows, and then we'll go into the dialog boxes, you know, what do you know? Maybe you only know a little bit. Maybe you wanna place it and just center it on this wall. Or maybe you want to uh, place an element here, and we can do this in 2D and 3D, but just to show you how flexible it is in 3D, maybe you wanna create a pattern. Uh, for those of you guys doing mixed-use buildings or buildings that have a lot of repetition, uh, maybe you want to come in and say, well, give me four more copies of this or 
give me as many, many windows as possible spread out at, at this particular instance. Uh, so there's a lot that we could build, or maybe you don't know it. Maybe you just want to build it based off of the the model, you know, what do I see? What do I like? After after you define the spacing of the first one, you can then build all of the additional uh, windows and, you know, change their height as well. So you can develop your design in any view. Uh, one thing I really like, like a match parameter, I can pick up parameters of something to begin drafting with it. And uh, one of the benefits of using the favorites I was talking about, maybe once again, maybe it's about office standards, maybe it's just about things that you like, but you can come and select elements that are already placed in your model. And if you want to perhaps change them so that they show up a little bit differently uh, or they, they have a different composition, go ahead and change them in your model here. And we're going to go into schedules, but all of those things are being updated simultaneously in the background. And I always like to delay it a little bit, uh, but you know, I, I do want to take a look at the elevations that are being generated as a result of this as well. Now I finally just go into this dialogue box because what are favorites, how are they created? What is in our library? Uh, all of our library and our menus in general, we seek to be very intuitive. So uh, it comes with a full library. It's organized via CSI categories. And we can see what this looks like in every view. We have diagrams, not menus, that help me understand exactly how I'm placing this element. Um, so I'm just gonna scroll through a couple of these. Now, number one, did I have to choose this first? Certainly, I, I did not. I just came in here and I started to draw. So you can start to set this up before, or maybe you just want placeholders in your schematic model. And then there's so much that's built into these elements and these are very parametric parts and you're not saving a new instance of the object every time. It's one object that can be many, 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 many uh, different things. And so as you develop these things and add in portions of this, and I'm, I know I'm moving a little bit quickly through some of these menus, you know, you could be as specific as detailed as you'd like to be. And maybe this is what you like, right? And this is a common window that you use either in this project or, or um, you know, every project might be added to your template. So what you could do is say, you know, double hung with, you know, custom sash or something, uh, but just, just name it so that you understand what it is. Um, and if you're working with others so that they understand what it is, because we don't want um, window one, window two, uh, nobody knows what that is necessarily except for you. Uh, so what we do, we, we just created a favorite and now when we're going to place an element either in 3d or 2d, I now have my favorite there and I can go ahead and pop that into any view. And when we talk about intentions, maybe your intention is to make sure that no matter what happens with this window that it is always a particular distance away. So what you could do is use hotspots and then type dimensions in. So we'll start here and then we'll type a dimension in. Maybe I always want this window to be five feet from the corner of this wall. And what will happen with this anchor point is that if this window changes size, it still holds uh, still holds true what, what I had, you know, as far as um, my particular dimensions. Now, when you use the uh, standard sizes, you can definitely use that or you can customize it if you just want to change it on the fly. So one of the benefits of the, the built-in sizes is that if that's what you want, you can just roll with that. Uh, but if that's the case, if you want to change it manually, you can use custom sizes uh, as well. So uh, let's take a look here. Uh, we want to... Um, Let's, uh, let's see, maybe we'll get into just a little bit about developing our model a little bit more, the renovation filter. Um, for those of you guys who are working on any of the renovation projects, uh, one thing that's happening, and maybe you're starting new, but there is a renovation filter where we can assign the status of an element existing to be demolished or new. And then based off of the filter, it's going to show a certain type of way. Uh, so what we can do here is to establish these elements and maybe we want to come in and demo parts of the project. So maybe we want to demo a couple walls. So I'll select a couple walls here 
and maybe we'll take out uh, a door and uh, a window and, you know, who knows? It might be complete exterior walls. But what can happen is I can change these to be demolished. Now, nothing's going to change because right now I'm looking through the lens of the existing plan. But when I change it to demolition plan, those things become red and dashed. Now, if I'm building my new plan, you'll notice it's going to patch those walls uh, wherever necessary, unless I deem otherwise. Or if I want to draw new elements, I can then select the new filter and begin to develop uh, the model according to whatever you need, right? So I might come in here and just to show you, maybe you want to reference things in the drawing. You can hold shift to, to constrain your proportions and, and draw elements here. But even as we introduce new elements, perhaps new doors and in, into old walls and new windows into old walls, um, it keeps track of the status of all of these elements and keeps this prepared for uh, your project needs down the line. And one thing that's happening, if you notice, um, when I, I place this new door, if I go back to take a look at that demolition plan, it knows it needs to get rid of a part of this door, this wall to, ac to accommodate that door or a part of this window to accommodate that door. So these are the things that are set up in your view settings and can be very beneficial for you, once again, communicating with your client. What are we doing here? Well, this is what we have. This is how we're going to change it. So just alleviating some of those pain points that can happen from using a workflow where you're using several different softwares. We can do it all in once. We can communicate it properly, but still stay on task for developing uh, our construction documents. Now, uh, let's transition just a little bit. And uh, let's annotate just this first floor. And I'll just go to the existing plan. So what can happen is we have the dimension tool where you can be very specific. You can dimension the core or the outside faces of these elements. Uh, but you can just come through and maybe click a bunch of walls and decide to uh, add in a dimension string that describes that. And we can move this in, into the building, to the exterior. This dimension string can be fully editable. So maybe, you know, you want to add that in or you say, oh, I forgot this wall here. Let me add this wall in. And then you can add that to your dimension string as well. So everything's very flexible there. Now, you can also benefit from uh, finding all of our walls, right? So um, there is an automatic dimensioning, uh, exterior dimensioning tool where I can be very specific about how much of this I want to detail, how much of this I want to dimension. And this is uh, twofold. Number one, every window, depending on what you need, has these different hotspots available. Uh, no room for error and clicking. Uh, but also, it's associated with the model. So as you change your model, these dimensions are going to change. So in this case, we can press OK. And I just give it a basic direction which I'm just going to trace the straight wall, and then I'm going to use my hammer to place the innermost string of all of those dimensions. So yes, this might be a bit much, but think about how many clicks this is. You can probably benefit from editing this rather than the click point by point, uh, and maybe you, you can do either, and that's the thing here. You can use some of the things that are in place to make it easy for you, or if you want to be very specific and click on elements point by point, you can now, all the time while this is happening, while we're talking about annotations, a lot of good stuff is happening in the background, right? Um, let's take a look at our sheets. I already have a schedule sheet set up. And, you know, maybe we don't take off the title. Maybe we rearrange these things. But, you know, it's developing the schedules, right? We can change IDs later. We can develop the door so that they have dimensions and pictures in it. It's building a list of any of these elements. And maybe this is, becomes a part of your template, exactly how you began to develop it. And there's so many more schedules that are available to you that are just waiting pretty much for a cue from you to be populated. Maybe you want to know about what kind of materials are in your project. Uh, maybe you could build a furniture, a furniture and equipment schedule or appliance schedule. It's just waiting. And that's the I and BIM. Maybe you won't use it, but it benefits you because it's always there for you. Now, uh, let's build our second floor, right? Um, we could do two things. We could go up to our second floor 
And then perhaps, I think I left that there from another time here, but we can go to our second floor and then perhaps show the first floor as a trace reference. And using that uh, eyedropper, like a match parameters, I can pick up parameters of whatever's below. We Remember, we turned that opacity down. Uh, but we can pick up the parameters of whatever's happening below and perhaps begin to trace this to, to form our new floor plate. That might be an option. Now, there's other easy options uh, that might be applicable to you, especially if you have a rep lot of repetition between floors. Uh, we have a feature called Edit Elements by Stories where you can say, hey, copy everything up from the first floor straight up to the second floor. And in doing so, we're doing two things. We're building our model, uh, but we do want to realize that we are copying everything up, right? So you want to be careful with your doors or build a balcony, uh, but just be aware of uh, how you, what, what, what you are using to design with uh, any of those elements. Uh, secondly, that floor slab, remember we use that. And so the copy paste, I'm doing it for the demo, but maybe you don't copy up everything, but the floor slab, we don't want the concrete and gravel. We can change that to our wood frame and gyp, gyp being the ceiling of the, the floor below. Uh, and uh, see this, or not ply, we want the hardwood actually, and we can add that in. And these are the composites and how you can start to develop it. Now, Maybe let's build our other stories. You may be wondering where the heights of these elements are coming from. Maybe I could have told you earlier, but what I wanted to demonstrate is quite frankly, I, uh, a lot of people are concerned with having to develop, to, to input so much information first before just getting a plain model out. You want to relish in the schematic design and understand that. So uh, one thing that's happening in the template and can be adjusted is that there are story heights. Control 7 or Command 7 will bring up our story heights. And so if we are building other levels or you know your typical project has at least this many floors, you know, why not insert them in so that your project is prepared to handle uh, any of these elements? And, and, and it depends, right? Maybe some information becomes available later. Maybe you don't know how low, how low you're going to build the foundation. We can adjust these, and the heights of my walls will adjust accordingly. So if we're building our roof, so let's do that. Let's go to our roof plan. Uh, maybe I use that second floor as a trace reference, right? Uh, what can happen is through the roof tool, we can bring, we can, we can build single plane roofs or multi plane roofs. We can start out with a gable or a, I mean, a hip or a gable. Uh, what I can essentially do is draw absolutely anything. And I always show this because roofs take time and they're also a place where you can benefit from 3d coordination for sure. Now this is a little bit wild, but any roof that I create, it's going to figure out a roof for, which means I can certainly trace this element to accomplish my roof. Now, there's also that magic wand I was talking about where I can use the tool and then hold that space bar to very quickly cl click and place uh, this roof element. And even as a roof element, it's so flexible, right? So we can go in and we can change the pitch. Uh, we can add in skylights if that's what we're going to do. I guess I can add a ceiling here in a moment. We can change one edge to act differently than the other. Maybe you want to click on a corner and, and tell it to be a gable end. And you can do that. And, and as a result, um, you know, very quickly run through different iterations and designs uh, for your structure. And I know I'm working on a residential project, but we have single plane slope roofs as well uh, that you can use, utilize to your advantage. So, you know, talking about this flexibility in 3D, the walls themselves are linked to the, the, the height of the roof, not necessarily the roof itself. So we can just stretch these walls up. Or if you like menus, you can go in and type in a height higher than the wall. But we can really right click on the both of these so that they now form a relationship and if my pitch changes, it's going to ask me, well, do you want to change that? Yeah, or you want to keep it custom? I certainly do. But you can adjust any of these elements uh, now that they have formed a relationship to each other. Now, I've waited a moment, but let's take a look. All the while in the background, what is it doing? It's updating the placement of these windows. 
And here's where, you know, we can easily make a mistake. It's, it's not, you know, we're, we're excellent and tedious in, in what we do in design, but updating section markers, elevation markers, updating windows, maybe you changed it in a plan, but it didn't update in a section. And this is places where we can make errors that can, you know, cause us to make addendums to a bin set or perhaps cause us more money and change orders later on. So all of this stuff is coordinated with my model right away. Now let's annotate uh, one of our, our elevations here. So let's try this one. Now you can use the label tool and you most certainly can come and do as you've always done, which is to point at something and type about it, right? Um, you can always do that. Uh, but as a result of building with our very intelligent model, uh, we have all types of labels that are available. I can pick up all types of information. And these are just, this is where favorites can really come in to your advantage because you're going to know what you want specifically. And then, you know, maybe you want to pick up information automatically from any of these elements. Or, uh, you know, I, I might pick up a wall surface or uh, maybe I want to know about uh, our roof or maybe I want to know about the entire composition. So there's a lot that can be had from, uh, the intelligent model uh, in making decisions with these composites and with these elements that can very quickly display all of the information we need and more. And of course, we can we can go about dimensioning here, uh, but you know it's 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 just your annotation doesn't have to change. And so, in questioning, you know what's going to happen to your workflow, uh, do know that you know your if you have some two D details you want to use. You can drag and drop them into a worksheet right where we started, and you can start to utilize those uh, as a part of, 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 of your set. Um, and maybe there's a little bit of a hybrid 2D, 3D, right? I know there are a lot of firms that do that too, and you want to detail at a particular level. That's totally fine, but there's a lot that you could benefit from the model. And as you're perhaps making changes, you know, it's updating everywhere. It's updating all of the information properly or uh, window IDs. That's a place where, you know, you can easily forget to, to, to change the tag of a window. Uh, and, and, and so using these, these to your advantage to either place them individually or perhaps do it all at once, you know, why not? All of that information can become available and you can very quickly coordinate your model uh, with any of your needs. So uh, let's do this. We'll build a slab. Um, just want to make sure I'm good on time here. I think we're okay and see a couple questions developing, so I will get to them in a moment. Um, but what we're doing here, well, you see the trace reference in the background of that roof above. Uh, we've went through a couple things. We've demolished some walls. We've built a new project. We've dimensioned it. We've got elevations. We've got sections. Of course, you want to be able to develop this more, but let's, let's go into another step of development, our foundation. Um, when building our foundation, maybe we want to use that trace reference again, right? Uh, and in doing so, you know, what you can do is, you know, maybe you have a single uh, foundation and here's where that complex profile can come into queue where we have a couple that are available that you can just draw with but we want to talk about custom detailing the fact that this is a solution that can really fit anyone um, if we wanted to or let's do this we want to base our foundation off of our first floor so what I'm going to do is select our first floor wall and capture it in the call in what's called our profile manager so this is a section view of that wall and it has broken that wall up into building materials of brick, airspace, sheathing, everything that we built with in that composite. So what we're going to do, we'll get rid of this, but we're going to build our foundation according to what's happening in our first floor plan. So what I can do is select the fill, because this is how we're getting it, the fills that actually have the, the building materials. And as you develop this element in these hot spots and kind of using this, you know, this is how we will actually start to teach where uh, the, the things that we have available, uh, how we draw in 2D can be used very much uh, within a 3D workflow. Or if we are drawing our elements here, 
and we are uh, finding specific distances and, and building these elements, we can build our footing to uh, any of the dimensions that, um, that we determine or maybe you know maybe you're modeling something existing but this is might be simple but take it a step further and a lot of archicad is adding nodes and pushing and pulling and offsetting edges and so if we're building what might be a brick ledge here you know utilize what you have already built into the model and although we are building something in a 2d format in a uh, what seems like a 2D playground, these are be things that will be extruded and developed uh, in our model, such as the gentleman I showed you earlier that's using the detailed model to cut all of his sections. So what I'll do here is kind of get rid of this top half using our split. And I'm going to show you some handy shortcuts and all these things. I'm kind of clicking so you can see, but we can customize a bunch of shortcuts. Uh, you'll definitely appreciate that. But now we can begin to store this element as part of our custom uh, foundation system. And when we go out to our foundation plan, uh, instead of drawing with different elements, now we can select the composite that we've created. We know that it's going to align because we're already using uh, we've used the first floor to understand what's happening down here. So, you know, there's a lot that's happening uh, already, and we can use that magic wand to, to build a portion or all of it. Uh, you can also go around and trace, right? So um, just letting you know, depending on what your workflow is, uh, you may work a number of different ways, and we have something for you. Uh, so as we're developing this element, and I'm going to wrap it up to talk about the communication tools after this, but we have in a very short time built a schematic model uh, that we can begin to detail further. Um, we can begin to do a lot of things, but the what's important here is that we're not throwing away a model after we're done with schematic design just to start it in 2D if you have requirements and needs for 3D information, or if you want to generate uh, some of our schedules. And right now, I just drew this, right? So you may be wondering, well, it's not dashed and different things. Remember, this is a custom element. So two things, I can go out to 3D, see where this is, and you notice maybe I didn't know where it was going to be. I can take this element and I can simply drag it into place where it needs to go, or I can use more definite measures uh, to help me develop this as far as dimensions, if I'd like to do that. Uh, but what's going to happen, we're going to take a section and take a look at that. But back to this plan really quickly here, you know, how do we define this, right? So I can select all these walls and I haven't gone into this menu at all, but there's so much control over how you really like to show it. So maybe our, our uncut elements, aka our footing down there, we need them to show dashed. And that is a very simple process to create a uh, foundation system so that when we go to take a look at our sections, and I think I forgot to build that ceiling on the second floor here, but when we take a look at our sections, they're making decisions. Uh, they're building with the detail that we prescribe. And um, speaking just about detailing, how do you place them? Some people measure to the top of the slab. Some people measure to the... Uh, top of the finished floor and you can get different connections depending on what you choose uh, And all of these elements and this I kind of left on purpose. You'll notice we do have custom Control over what happens in composites uh, One of the things that's built into the system is if we go into our composite uh, Excuse me if we go into our building material list and we didn't want this to to punch through this element uh, there's a priority at stake. You don't need to know the number, but just it can have a, a stronger number in order to win at intersections or to punch through uh, any of these elements. So you might change your details using this, or you might actually just draw it directly to the sheathing. So there's a lot that we can do in terms of our detail. And if we want to build a detail really quickly here so that we can take a look at that, uh, detail is where you probably want to add some of your some more of your 2d data right or or add in some of your standard details so we can go into a detail mode 
wait for this market to be updated whenever I place it somewhere and then begin to, to build with some real elements, right? So, you know, we have a number of different objects and, you know, there's a lot that we can cover within this, this, this demo. And I don't want to overwhelm you. That's not the point. But, you know, what we want to do is understand what you need so that we can point you in the right direction. And as you begin to develop the model for whatever your purposes is for construction documents or for, uh, you know, just a preliminary city meeting, just to get an eye, get, get approval on a site or a loan or something, all of that information uh, is available for you. So I just got to do a very crude, quick detail, but, you know, maybe you draw this stuff in 2D or maybe this just becomes some of the 2D objects that we use, uh, you can utilize as well. And you can change display order and, and all of these things to customize your particular detail. And then lastly, you know, this window detail, you know, maybe you don't want to take our window detail, which you can definitely customize. And we have manufacturer objects. Back to this worksheet again. Maybe you have uh, a uh, spec sheet from uh, a manufacturer. So you can bring that element in uh, and, as well, or PDFs, and save yourself time drafting. Uh, if you know that they have a detail available and this is created by a vector-based product, which most of these will be, such as a CAD or something like that, you can take this detail and instead of setting up your intern to draft it or having you draft it, uh, you can now explode this into lines and text and then link this into your documentation. Customize it to your needs. All of this stuff is happening here in the background. Now, if we go back to our sheets before we transition into BIMx and what we can get with the renderings and things of that nature, you know, all of our sheets are doing something, right? They're they're populating in the background. They're updating with information uh, as it becomes available, and you can create your own custom sheets uh, and numbering. And right now, I'm just zoomed out. You can set these up for printing or you can have the color, or you can have them come in black and white. There's a lot of customization that you can do in order to get uh, any of the things that you uh, eventually need for your model. And even our schedules, if we could come back here, and we know these might move around because you might have a truly massive project, right? Uh, but these things are updating in the background, uh, and I know that they're updating as far as my schedules. So. Lastly, um, you want to get this thing out. Um, you want to create your own custom sheets, whatever it is. I can, I can create custom sheets, add them in. They're going to follow the format. And as far as the numbering is concerned, you know, if, if anything on the section pages moves, it's going to move. So that's all the good stuff that's happening from developing your construction document uh, in one platform. Now, one thing that we get, you can export this to PDFs, which is nice. BIMx is our mobile platform. I'm going to bring up a, a screen of my iPad right now. It is available on Android devices as well as um, um, iDevices. Just give me one moment here. Uh, but what this allows me to do is to uh, export my model to a format where I can explore it. I could perhaps send this to my client um, and have them walk through it. And it becomes a bit of a portfolio piece. And this is sometimes where we don't have time to develop, uh, where we don't have time to develop as much as, as, as we would have liked to. So you can come in and, and have your 3D model and show your documentation and have that update. And if there's a little bit of delay, it is because of go-to meeting. Uh, but, you know, maybe you want to zoom around your project, see parts of it, or maybe you want to activate the first person mode and kind of walk in and see what's going on. But all of that information that we put into the model is all of the information that we can get out to out of it, including these links to uh, different plans as they become available. So this can become your all in one solution. And you know, how valuable will it be to show your client in 3D what you're talking about in construction documents? Because sometimes that's where they lose. That's, that's honestly where they lose us. Uh, they'll say, I understand. And then it gets built or it's happening. And they're like, that's not exactly what I had in mind. And you're looking at them like, I don't understand why we talked about this. Right. So 
this BIMX app, um, you know, you can use on a number of different projects and it can become a presentation tool, not just for the model, but the fact that I can customize the pages in this document to give a presentation set or perhaps uh, just a um, uh, just the 3D model. Um, we've often, I, I actually have a story where with Eric's parents, he, they were dealing with the contractor uh, and, you know, they couldn't quite visualize what he was seeing. So I, he had me come and build a model uh, just a couple hours and they were able to walk through the model to get a better idea of what this home would represent. So what we're doing, whether this is for you or not, whether you need to utilize this 3D model or all of the many features that I've shown you, what we're offering is an integrated solution that can give you the flexibility to start your project exactly how you want, as simple or as detailed as you want, and then transition into absolutely everything uh, that you're going to need. Uh, and hey, if, if, if you don't want to do it here, you want to export to other formats, remember once again, we have those different formats you can export to, uh, including DWG's SketchUp, RVT, Excel, IFC, Rhino, uh, DGN, DXFs. Uh, there's quite a list that's available. So this is all what you're benefiting from with ArchiCAD. And what's great about all that I've shown you here today, which remember this is a demo, don't feel overwhelmed, <laughs> please don't, but we are bundling uh, and with, this, with this ALA uh, member benefit to include some of this training, to get you on the right track, to figure out what it is that you need so that you can design more efficiently. Uh, so I'm going to open it up for questions. We've just hit the hour. If you have any more questions about the ALA benefit itself, uh, please feel free to uh, contact Eric or myself. Um, but let me just put this here if you like to take a look at it, and I'll take a look at some of your questions. So thank you for all of you who have stayed, and I hope some of you stay to see some of the questions as well. All right. So um, I had a question about the roof, how to, I've seen complex roof, but not gables. I don't know how to create those. Uh, okay, so when we're building our roof, and uh, let's go out here to our floor plan. Yes, that benefit, that, that, that extra quick creation is great, right? But you might have other roofs. So our roof system, basically we have single plane roofs and we have multi-plane roofs. Uh, based on which one you need, you can start out with that. The one that I drew, it was kind of an odd shape. You can draw any shape with a complex roof. But then you can also start from particularly a gable or a hip roof. So what that entails, uh, and I'll demonstrate the other ones as well, but basically I just draw it uh, to the dimensions that I have, that, I, that I'd like, right? So... You know, maybe I want this to be 15 by 30 or something else, uh, but it's going to create that. And what you're seeing, this is ArchiCAD. You won't necessarily see this line output in your drawing. It's a reference line, but it also, in our roofs, you're able to build the offset uh, for those particular uh, overhangs as well as change some of the edges and corners uh, that are available. So if that answers your question, let me know. If you have further questions, let me know about that. Otherwise, I'll answer another here. Okay. So what about renderings? Thank you for asking. You know, it's a power pack demo here. Lots to show. So with the renderings, we have two offerings. And what we're uh, offering here today, we have ArchiCAD Solo and ArchiCAD Full. The main difference between them will be the rendering engine. Center Render, our, mo our very sophisticated rendering engine, is included with ArchiCAD. Solo includes a rendering engine, but it's just a basic engine. Also, ArchiCAD Full has teamwork. So if you're working with multiple people in your office and you guys need to collaborate on one project at the same time, you can use teamwork to facilitate that. Those are some of the main differences between ArchiCAD Full and Solo. So to give you an example of what those rendering differences look like, and uh, I have a couple uh, open here, and I didn't know I had this up first, but this is a rendering out of ArchiCAD Solo. Uh, it's good for understanding the structure. You get basic materials. Uh, you can understand your project, and uh, everyone can benefit from 
uh, sketch modeling uh, that is available where through our sketch model, you can control everything, right? The overstretch of the line, the pen, the colors. And so you can get some really unique drawings out of this. And I know more and more, some people are shifting away from photorealistic. This is an option for you available for both the solo and the full versions. Uh, now, if we're talking about the full version, uh, what we get is a little bit more of a detailed render. So remember, we started out with this one, and I'll go back through a couple of these, but we're talking about grass that you can grow within ARCHICAD. You have shadows that are significant to the time, uh, that are, are responding to the time of day. Um, trees are in both versions, trees and bushes, but you can have the white model effect. Understand your model, the shadows that it creates. Uh, but you can get really good results very quickly. Uh, we have a lot of out-of-the-box rendering settings. And then we also have uh, rendering settings that can be completely customized depending on your needs. And if we're talking about commercial projects, you know, in, once again, your level of detail is going to be up to you. You can be very, you know, colorful, cartoon-like. This is an instance where a sketch model has been overlaid a real model in a Photoshop, but everything else here that we'll be looking at is created native within ARCHICAD. Um, so you can benefit from the rendering engine in the full version, whether you know things about rendering or not, or you can be very detailed with it. Or you might export it to a, uh, wherever else you're using now. Uh, so that's always an option. So these are just a couple of different examples of what those renderings look like. And I always get to this one. I mean, you can get really great with it. You know, some of the renderings I've showed you just to start are uh, two minute renderings, one minute renderings, couple seconds, some of them. And once again, basic versus full. So it's really the full version is going to give you something photo, more photorealistic. Uh, and you can benefit from the lights or, or just daylighting and kind of understand your project uh, a little bit better. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a preview of what we're talking about uh, within um, the uh, full version. Uh, so I see there is another question here. Uh, one second. All right, great. Right. We got we got quite we got an answer on that. That was good uh, for the menus. Uh, so let's move on to another question. Let's see here. All right. So let me go back in Archicast. I had a question about the consultants' drawings, how you work with them. Um, I had um, two things, right? I know some people completely outsource everything. Um, I'm gonna go back to this project I had up. Um, be, and because also some architects are developing these basic plans. Uh, what you're seeing here is an example of graphic overrides. We didn't get to talk about them as much, but it could be for different purposes. In this case, the graphic override says make the plan gray, make everything gray, but make the symbols for the mechanical plan pop out. So if you are uh, using any of the uh, 2D functionality in creating this, and we do have 3D uh, called MEP Modeler available if you'd like to uh, model the full mechanical system. Uh, but as we are uh, creating these elements, if we could go into um, what any of those look like, and I'll take a look at an electrical plan. This is also using a similar uh, uh, override here. You know, it's going to be having um, all of that information available. And what the graphic override does is it's made of rules and combinations. So the rule might say, just like our demo, things we know like demo becomes red and dashed. That's what it did. It said, find all those things to be demo and turn it into red and dashed or change the line type of the surface. So you can start to create these other ones that say, find everything or find only these things and do these things. Or if you want to gray out fixtures or furniture, or just the wall elements. And this is how you can really capitalize off of using the single software as a source of really all the, the different types of drawings uh, that you can create. Um, just while I'm here, this one, a roof plan, when we're talking about, you know, say you have a complex roof plan. Uh, in this particular project, I recall that, you know, there was an overall roof plan, but then wanted to kind of detail between some of the upper the upper the upper roofs and the lower roofs so we created overrides to um, create uh, key plans 
so that we could separately frame out uh, each of each of the elements. So you're going to use that graphic override for a lot of different things, um, but it, it you know it could definitely just be to your advantage to use the one file for what for what you need. All right, two more questions, and then we'll let go here. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit more about the special. If you have any questions there, uh, but I do have a question about schedule. So I had a question here. I saw you had pictures in your schedule. How how can you do that? So yeah, um, to piece of cake here, right? So um, one thing that's built into the schedules, uh, and it kind of goes back to how that graphic override was created. Uh, we create some criteria that says, look for these things. And when you find them, show this, right? So if I look at a window schedule, for instance, um, there's always the scheme settings. And so that's the I and BIM is that there's so much information. And don't worry, we start you off with some different schedules in the template. So you don't have to start from scratch. But what that allows me to do is say, you know, oh, I have this BIM object. There are lots of different things that are available from it, uh, some of which might be the 3D view. Um, we didn't we didn't necessarily get into here, but let's add a 3D view. Um, properties is something we didn't talk about. Maybe you want to create your own custom metadata, your own things that aren't necessarily what Archicad has. You want to create something custom. You can add properties and add this stuff so that it is available in your schedule if you want to export it uh, or use it for further needs. So right now, I just added that 3D image. So adding images or even dimensions, uh, you know, I can click on these elements and I can say, well, what do I want to dimension? Do I want to dimension the nominal size? And then I can dimension the whole thing uh, to get a, to get an idea of it. And I think I, I had a, a different dimension uh, activated before, and that's why I've got level symbols. But what that what that allows me to do is is know that that type of stuff is updating. Uh, no problem. And that, you know, as I go to make changes or perhaps, excuse me, add any metadata, sorry, I wanted to, to change that dimension string. But as I add any of that uh, metadata, uh, it will be populating and updating correctly within any of my schedules. So last question, and then we're going to start here. Uh Let's see here. So I see a couple. It has, I guess I got, I got a couple questions on schedule. So I'll just end on this note about schedules. So uh, does it create image P drawings or schedules? Uh, it does not create your plumbing riser diagrams. Um, one thing that it, we do have another offering, our uh, MEP modeler. Uh, if you do purchase MEP modeler, which is a small fee, we can give you the information on that. But MEP modeler includes... Um, uh, all of your <laughs> MEP equipment. And so if you wanted to model in 3D and show that, you actually could. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, and what it also does is gives your, um, your, uh, your particular plans a, well, let me just go into a blank file. Uh, but what it does give is your fixtures a uh, option, basically, so that, for instance, if I look up a uh, a cabinet now, and this just kind of goes into our library and being parametric, and remember, we do have favorites that are available for some manufacturers here. Uh, but what this could mean is, um, as I'm changing this element, you'll see these three little connections. That's because I have MEP modeler installed. And so you'll then get this dialog box where if you want to connect the tubes to this to show this in actuality, you can, or you can always turn this off. Uh, but it's not building these automatically. That still is a uh, manual process for um, our, our riser diagrams. And I think there was one here, uh, but this is just 2D information uh that's you that's that's utilized as well so um just to wrap this up thank you for taking the time here today um this is the ala benefit now we uh, we only have a, a a window in order to make this purchase between june 1st and june 29th to benefit from this if you have any questions you want to see any sample demo specific to your needs you can contact reach out to myself or eric and we will get your information 
Uh, also, uh, you know, we can kind of walk through what it looks like and give you a quote for your particular needs. And do remember, this bundle comes with training, hours of training to get you started. Now we can get you, and it, we have several, we have four, uh, two, three hour sessions basically detailing how you can get started in Archicad as well. So um, we want to introduce you to BIM. We want it to be a positive experience. We work hard uh, to create a product that can accommodate many different needs. And then also in partnering with ALA, we're partnering to create a value for you uh, and for your membership. So uh, thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. For those of you guys who are researching, we do have a help center, helpcenter.graphisoft.com. We have a YouTube channel. And uh, this by design video, which if any of you guys came early, you'll definitely want to see by design features many different architects, different projects, different scales, different locale. And so if you're wondering if Archicad is a right fit for you, check out some of their stories, see how they're using Archicad. And we hope that you will be using it soon as well. Well, thank you so much. And you guys have a wonderful Friday and a great weekend. Bye-bye.